Okay, in this video we're going to talk about two objects thrown up in free fall, the difference of their time and their final velocity. So, let's begin. Billy and Jenny are standing on a cliff. Billy throws an object straight up into the air with a speed of 30 meters per second. At the same time, Jenny throws an object straight down with a speed of 30 meters per second. How much longer is Billy's object in the air for than Jenny's object? And what is the final speed of Billy's object in terms of Jenny's object? A lot of information, not given a lot of information to, to find that, right? So, a lot of information to find, not given a lot of information. We just know that they're both thrown at 30. Sounds a little bit crazy, but it's not really crazy. I'll explain to you now what we're doing. So here is our situation. Billy is going to be in red. Jenny's going to be in green. So Billy, Billy, Billy throws it up 30 meters per second. He's going to throw it up. It's going to go up in the air. And then eventually it's going to come back down. And then it's going to go to the ground. Jenny just throws her object straight down. So what's the difference here? Well, we need to talk about symmetry. So I'm going to take some of these arrows up here that I've drawn in here ahead of time. And we need to know that uh, Billy's initial speed and final speed are the same at this point when it comes back to its initial height. So that's a clue. So from this point forward, it's an identical problem. They happen at different uh, sections of time, but when Billy's object comes back here, it's the same as Jenny throwing it down at 30. So let's just clarify that. So V initial, Billy Billy is 30. V final of Billy Billy is negative 30. And uh, V initial of Jenny is negative 30. So what's the difference in time of the flight? They want to know what's the difference. How much longer is this one in the air for than this one? It seems like there's not enough information. How tall is the cliff and what's going on and blah, blah, blah. Well, we don't really care about that. We just care about the fact that the difference in the time between these two problems is just this part right here. That's your change of time right there. This part right here. That's the difference between uh, Billy and Jenny. That's the difference. So the initial of Jenny, right? All right, so that's your delta T right there. So let's let's solve that. Let's find out what that delta T is of that object in the air. I guess I'll just leave it in, in red for you. Okay, so to find that out, we need to figure out the time. So let's draw our variables. What do we know? Okay. Well, I'm going to make acceleration in the Y, negative 10, just to be simple on this. The initial Y. They're talking about Billy. Billy, Billy. V final of Billy in the Y. V final in the Y, Billy. It's negative 30. Delta Y. What's delta Y? Do we know that? We sure do. It came back to the same spot. Zero. What's the time? That's what we're looking for, right? We don't know. Now, how many variables do we need to solve a kinematics equation with constant velocity? Does anybody know? We need four, or sorry, we need three variables to solve it. How many variables do I have here? One, two, three, four. I have four variables, right? Okay, that's good news. Why is that good news? Well, if I have four variables, four variables in this case, it's going to make our life a lot easier. Okay? What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at the kinematics equations. What were the kinematics equations? Do you remember? Okay, let's take a look then. Kinematics equations were Delta Y is V initial plus V over 2 times time. V final equals V initial plus AT. Delta Y is V0 T plus 1 half AT squared. And V squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta Y. Okay. Which one should you use? Well, if you have four variables, you should stay away from these because these are the hard ones. Yeah, these are the easy ones. These are the easy ones right here. Uh, always try to go to the easy ones if you can. These hard ones, the reason they're hard is uh, this one has, you, it can give you a quadratic if delta y is not zero. This one, um, you take the square root, you have to choose the correct sign, plus or minus. So these are easy, easy peasy. So I'm looking for time here, right? So which is the easiest one to work with? Definitely this one. Do I have initial velocity? Roger. Do I have 
Sorry, do I have final velocity, Roger? Initial velocity, Roger. Do I have acceleration, Roger that. Time we're looking for. Okay? We're looking for time. Pretty simple stuff at this point. So so I'm looking for the time here. So the time is going to be V final minus V initial over acceleration. Okay? So if I write that out, my V final is negative 30 minus my V initial, which is positive 30, over negative 10, which is acceleration of gravity. So my time is going to be 60 over 10, or it's just going to be 6 seconds. Okay? That's it. That's how much longer Billy Billy Billy's is in the air for than Jenny's. Okay? That's how much longer. Now, what's the final speed of Billy's object in terms of Jenny's object? In terms of, in terms of means as a, one is a function of the other. Well, I told you before that from this point, Billy's speed is the same as Jenny's speed because it's symmetric. So they're both going to accelerate at the same rate at that point. They have the same initial velocity, so they have the same final velocity at this point. Okay, so the final velocity, the final velocity of Billy is the same as the final velocity of Ginny. They're the same at that point. So that answers the second part of that question for you. Okay? So that's just a classical problem dealing with symmetry of objects, the difference of time in the air, and then the relationship of their final speeds once they hit the ground. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.